The Lake District, also known as Lakeland, is one of the United Kingdom's most picturesque areas. Located in the northwest of England, near the Scottish border and just five hours drive from London, this mountainous region is a popular holiday destination. The Lake District National Park, occupying the region's central area, is the biggest tourist draw. The jewel of the Lake District is undoubtedly Lake Windermere, framed by the highest mountains in the country, some of which reach nearly a thousand meters or approximately 3,300 feet high. At its longest, Lake Windermere extends to nearly 18 kilometers or 11 miles. Along the lake's eastern shore, the small village of Bonus on Windermere charms even from a first glance. For over 150 years, it has attracted lovers of nature and the great outdoors who come to admire this magnificent lake whose depths have been carved out by thousands of years of melting glaciers. But this lake also hides a fascinating mystery. A strange creature lives in its depths, surfacing only occasionally to surprise tourists and unsuspecting fishermen. I saw some strange disturbance under the water. About a foot under the water, I would say. And it was like a, a churning kind of motion under the water in a horizontal fashion. I could sense that the boat was going to rock from side to side or have an impact on it. It was three lumps, really. I kind of saw th round about three lumps in the water, the classic kind of Loch Ness shape. I panicked because I'm in the water, I'm alone, and I feel there's something there. What's going to happen? I would describe it as a sea monster um, with a large body, a long neck, and a small head. Travelling very fast, uh, so fast that white water was breaking off the, off the humps, uh, and it was heading north up the lake. I saw something in the water, whether it was a monster, I don't know, but I definitely saw something in the water. It was long, it was black, it was moving through the water. Um, what it actually was, I'll leave others to determine. Since 2006, there have been at least eight eyewitness sightings reported, all of which gave similar physical descriptions. The mounting evidence of this unlikely creature continues to disturb local residents. Bowness is the main village on the lake here on Windermere. When the local paper first reported the first sighting of the monster, um, they took the name from a Scottish legend, a folklore in Scotland, where on Loch Ness there is a monster known as Nessie. Um, so they put the two names together and came up with Bow Nessie, which caught on in popular imagination very quickly. Bowness has been seen as uh, really a, um, a dark shape in the waters of Lake Windermere. Generally, we think that she or he might be maybe 20 or 30 metres long with humps and a sort of traditional monster shape. Rumours about a monster had been circulating since at least the 1950s, but it was not until 2006 that Bo Nessie would fully reveal herself in front of two lovers who, like so many others, came to the Lake District on holiday. They remember, as if it was yesterday, a walk they took down by the lake. First sighting was July 2006. It was the end of July. It was a, a warm summer. It was a good summer. Um, we were having uh, lunch with some friends who were staying just nearby at the Dower House next to Ray Castle and decided to go for a walk after lunch. And we walked down to Watbarrow Point and we were chatting and um, I heard Steve talking about something in the water and he was pointing and at first I didn't take any notice and then he said, where's my camera? I was looking down on it from the promontory, so I may have been about, I don't know, 20 yards away from it, perhaps even closer. I, I'm really quite close, really. And it was clear that it was a living creature. And I was, what surprised me most of all, I think, was not just seeing it, but it was the speed at which it was traveling. There was no kind of flapping about or anything. It wasn't like a fish. It was going like a torpedo. 
So it's clearly it wasn't anything other than a, than a living creature. It all happened really quickly because, because of the speed at which it was travelling. And within, I don't know, 20 seconds or something, it was way up the lake. What exactly was seen that day remains a mystery. But subsequent strange sightings have corroborated Eileen and Steve's testimony and lent credence to their theory that something strange inhabits the depths of Lake Windermere. Until the first sighting in 2006, Bonessi was more a myth than a monster. Nobody really believed in the existence of a strange creature in Lake Windermere. But the couple's story of their encounter has changed all that. Almost overnight, opinions altered and Steve and Eileen's testimony traveled far beyond England's borders. There's never been any history of uh, anybody seeing anything in this lake, as, as far as I know. So I was the first person, really, to see it. The story appeared in the, in the Westmoreland Gazette in August 2006, and then was, the story was picked up by a lot of the media, both nationally and internationally. It seemed to go around the globe. Somebody told me that quite early on it was in the... Uh, it was in one of the big Indian national newspapers, and, and I have heard said that, uh, you know, it's, it's now kind of got into travel books abroad. It's become a... It's become a, a kind of an established fact, if you like, that there is something in here. In 2007, a man named Lyndon Adams and his wife witnessed their own disturbing scene on the lake, and the pictures Lyndon took made headlines in local papers. All of this excitement and mystery attracted Dean Maynard, a renowned specialist in paranormal phenomena, to come investigate for himself. To document his research, he hired professional cameraman John McKeown. Yeah, close to where we are now on the road behind us um, is where I filmed some shots of a disturbance in the water which I couldn't explain. The nature of my filming that day was to come out on the lake to see if we could capture shots of a creature that Lyndon Adams had photographed from Gummer's Howe to film what people have now dubbed Bonessi. So the shots I took were the establishing shots of the lake. It was a, it was a clear day, it was slightly overcast, but the water was still, uh, and the disturbance I saw I thought was from the local car ferry, so I stopped recording. Later, when I spoke to a local boatman, um, he pointed out that the ferry was a mile further up the lake, so it couldn't have been that kind of disturbance. He couldn't explain it, and neither can I, and I've not had a good explanation of what the footage is. But what do the people of the region believe? Especially those in Bonus on Windermere, the only town on the lake's coast. Are they also convinced of the presence of an aquatic monster in their lake? I think, on balance, most local people are skeptical. Having said that, when the local paper ran an online survey at the time of, um, I think it was one of the subsequent sightings, maybe two or three years ago, they ran an online survey and said, just very simple question, do you believe in, in Bonessi, yes or no? And it was absolutely 50-50. And that was among their readership, who are mostly local people. My experience is, is there a fish that's lived there for thousands of years that people have experienced? They've never sort of brought it out into the community for fear of ridicule, for fear of laughter, for fear of being taken as a fool. Well, I can tell you from now, they're not fools. There is something in there. I would class Bonessi as a large mammal, prehistoric possibly, who's been around in Windermere for quite a number of years. 
and he just chooses to be seen by various people every so often. There has been various sightings in the last couple of years and a couple of very credible ones. Myself and Thomas have had an encounter with him and other local people have also had encounters in the previous years. The different sightings reported over the last few years have occurred in both the northern and southern ends of Lake Windermere. England's largest body of water, Lake Windermere, is embedded in the hills of the Lake District, an area whose natural beauty has been perfectly preserved. I describe the Lake District as like the Great Lakes of America, but smaller, like the mountains of Switzerland, but in miniature form, and it's a one-stop travel experience. They can come here, they can uh, visit everything in a week, as opposed to sort of traveling around the country for weeks or months. And here, and here's just with the villages, and it's, it's unspoiled, it's, uh, you, you know, it's, it's a beautiful. From maybe if we were here 300 years ago, and I'm sitting here, it's exactly the same view that you would have. Is it possible that so idyllic a landscape is haunted by a lake monster? Half of the area's residents say yes. Between 2006 and 2013, all of the witnesses claiming to have seen Bonessi were, fortunately, outside the water. All of them, that is, except Thomas Noblet, a local hotel owner and champion swimmer who regularly crosses the lake. It was on one such crossing, according to him, that he was literally grazed by the monster. I have had one quite serious meeting with Bonessi a couple of years back. In preparation for a channel swim that I had committed myself to, uh, we had to train. And the best way to train is in the lake. But also, the lake is full of boat traffic. You've got water skiers. You've got the ferries. It's just a constant activity. Uh, so we decided that we'd start early morning swimming. I accompanied Thomas throughout the UK and Europe on various long distance swims that he's encountered. I train him and keep an eye on him when he's swimming as well. The most important thing when I'm out swimming with Thomas is the safety aspect, keeping an eye on him constantly and ensuring that if he got into any difficulties, I'm able to fish him out of the water straight away. We had a very unusual encounter early one July morning a couple of years back when training with Thomas on Lake Windermere. And this particular morning, it was 5.45, and it was a mirror. It was like a mirror. The lake was beautiful. You could see the mountains looked upside down. It was a perfect picture. And I really didn't want to jump in and spoil the tranquility of the, of the lake. We head out to an area just opposite the Langdale Chase Hotel called The Deeps, which is the deepest part of Lake Windermere. It's called The Deeps and it has a very, and it, it puts sort of fear into me as well, and I have swum all up and down the lake. But as soon as someone mentioned the deeps, and any swimmer, you recoil, because it has that mystique about it. So I got in, I swam, and I do what I normally do, get my stroke together, and then kind of switch off, and just let the mechanics of my stroke get me across to the other side of the lake. Thomas was swimming along, he was in his own little world. I was planning my day, we're talking five o'clock in the morning, I was planning my day, what I needed to do at the hotel. After this, I was swim, and then all of a sudden, we had a bit of a bit of an encounter. I felt this massive thrust go past me. And first and foremost, I thought it was a, a large fish, Then I thought it could have been a speedboat with a, the water skier on the back, and I thought, with the whole lake, we're the only ones on here, why come so near us? And it sent a panic through me. And then, next thing, the boat that I was canoeing in at the time rocked from side to side, nigh on tipping me out of the boat. He was being tossed around, and next thing, I was lifted up and dropped down like a cork. And I looked around, I could see nothing. 
and I could see the concern on his face. And I said to him, what the hell was that? And he was speechless, looking down the lake. I just watched in absolute amazement as go down the lake, a bow wave, and then all of a sudden it just sank straight down, whatever this was, disappeared straight down. Nothing's there, like a Mary Celeste. I said, let's get back. I was shaken, and I was shocked. And I said, I've just experienced something. I don't think no one's believed me. Here, bonus, he was, and I had got to feel him. Many people over the years have said to us different things. Oh, was it not speedboats? Was it not somebody water skiing on the lake? We're talking five o'clock in the morning. It was flat calm the lake. It was like glass. There wasn't a soul about, hence why we go out so early. After that experience, I'm a true believer. Lake Windermere is crisscrossed throughout the year by ferries and boats. If a giant creature truly swims in these waters, these mariners are without a doubt the ones best placed to know about it. I'm the managing director of Windermere Lake Cruises. We operate 16 passenger boats on Windermere, and those boats will have a crew varying from two on the smaller boats up to a crew of seven. So I've got probably about 40 captains, and they spend all their working day on the lake. We sail 364 days a year, throughout the hours of daylight. So from first thing in the morning until late in the evening, we've got skippers and crews out on the lake, watching, keeping a lookout for other boats, other craft, and for anything in the water. Well, I've, uh, I've worked for the company for about 18 years. So I've been driving these boats for about 12 years, full time on here. So I spent a lot of time on the lake. There are you know, four full-time skippers on these boats. Uh, we spend about 2,000 hours a, a year on the lake. Now, I've never seen animals on the lake that you wouldn't expect. I, I, I have a list of animals that I see swimming in the lake that you wouldn't expect to see in the lake, but I know what they are. There's a, a pheasant, a gannet, a squirrel, and a deer. In my time here, those are the four animals that you wouldn't expect to see in the lake, but I could identify them. Perhaps they want to believe that there's something here, and they maybe think they do. You know, like on the day to day with lots of waves, you can see ripples in the lake that they might construe to be a, a creature, but it's not something that I've ever believed in. I've only heard descriptions from other people, and as boatmen, we keep our feet very much on the ground or on the boat deck. So we have to see things with our own eyes, really, to believe it. So maybe I'm not just the right guy to ask. It's a fact for me. It's, uh, if there have been eight sightings, that doesn't convince me that it exists. My own sighting convinced me because I absolutely know what I saw. You know, I saw a living creature that was very long, travelling very fast, and it didn't resemble anything I'd ever seen. It certainly didn't resemble anything that should be living in this lake that anybody's ever recorded. So for me, uh, my own sighting convinces me absolutely. And bear in mind that my background is as a journalist, so, you know, I'm kind of a skeptic about most things. I'm skeptical about things until I can prove that they're true. But I have to believe my own, my own senses. I did, I did see it. I was born and raised in uh, Bowness on Windermere. Um, when I was younger, I uh, worked on the rowing boats down on the lake and um, we were out every day, most summers, on the lake itself, uh, in the rowing boats, um, tiring them out to tourists. And to be honest, we've never seen anything mysterious actually in or on the lake, other than tourists. And um, my feeling is that there isn't anything really to worry about um, out there, but obviously I could be proved wrong. plagues those who believe in the creature's existence. If there really is something inexplicable swimming in the lake, why did virtually no one report seeing it before 2006? Why all of a sudden has Bonessi decided to make so many spectacular public appearances? The first sighting was in 2006, which was 12 months after 
um, the speed limit came uh, in force on the lake. So the lake was a much quieter place. For 12 months, there had been no speed boats. So anything that perhaps had been living at the bottom of the lake or in the depths of the water might have felt encouraged to, um, to show itself. In the spring of 2005, a law was enacted prohibiting boats from traveling faster than 10 miles or 16 kilometers per hour. Apart from the rare occasion that a speedboat breaks this law, the lake is extremely peaceful. My theory is really quite simple. It started appearing because the lake is now quiet. You know, it's not frightened by, by this constant noise. Perhaps in the past it has been popping up at night time when there's nobody around, but now, because the lake is quiet, uh, that's why I think it's appearing. Whatever it is, I think it's appearing because of that. I'm a lake ecologist from the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, and I've been conducting scientific research on Windermere since 1990. Most of my personal work is to do with the, the fish populations of, of the lake, but I work within a, a research group which looks at all aspects of the lake, from its physics, basic elements of its chemistry, through its plankton and other small animals, and up to the, the fish populations. Well, the, the, obvious feature of the Lake District are the lakes themselves. There's nowhere else in England that has such a diversity and such a number of lakes. And then Windermere itself is the largest natural lake in all of England by surface area, and it's one of the deepest as well. So it may well be that there are other species down at the bottom of the lake because it's such an ancient piece of water and because it's so vast, it's 11 miles in length, and because of its depth, then there may well be um, creatures, fishes, large ones at the bottom of the lake that have not been seen. Windermere is, is inhabited by a number of species of, of fish. And one, the Arctic char, is very localised in England, so it's quite a rare species. We also have large numbers of perch, uh, fish called the roach, and also fish called the pike and Atlantic salmon and brown trout will come into the lake as well. But the largest of these fish would be the pike or the salmon, and the largest individual we would ever see would still be less than a metre in length. So none of the native fish of the lake could possibly explain sightings of a, of a very large animal. My, my best idea of what the bonetti thing could be is uh, if it is a larger animal than the kind of things that we know are in the lake. My best guess is that, that it's a large catfish that has been introduced. A species which is not native to this part of the UK, for sure. And we know that some anglers have brought catfish into the UK for fishing purposes. But these catfish, even in their native part of the world, they don't get large enough to be the kind of size that Bonessi is supposed to be. I, I see no reason why there might not be a, a genetic hybrid sort of creature uh, in the lake, perhaps a very large eel, a very large catfish. My perception of what I think might be in there and what I thought prior to swimming are two different things. If you had asked me, Prior to my swimming, what was in there, I would say large fish, cold water, and boats. And in my opinion, there are believers, non-believers, or in between us. And people that, you know, I know would never come out with these stories, have experienced different things, whether on top of the water, on the side of the water, whether they're sailing, uh, not so much swimming. They've experienced something very similar. Now, all of us can't be wrong. And what to make of the disappearance of certain fish populations in the lake despite its remarkable water purity? This is a recent phenomenon that has only added to the lake's mystery. And since then, with the questions and asking sailors have been on there, which they've experienced seeing something come towards their boats and rolling over like a slab of meat, then disappearing down, it makes it could be a an old prehistoric monster that lives down on the bottom that's feeding on the fish. 
the lake is not overfished. There's the odd fisherman that goes out there, there's no trawlers, but there's a lack of fish. And swimming sometimes, apart from the odd fish, we see nothing. And at the bottom, there's char, but people are not catching anything. And there's no pollution in that lake. It flourishes with all types of wildlife. Um, and it just begs what is eating, or why is the fish not bountiful? Despite much of the local population's skepticism about Bonassi's existence, its growing legend, propelled by media reports from around the world, has attracted many tourists to the Lake District. The first sighting was made by a guy here on holiday, uh, so I saw it in our local newspaper. And then it subsequently turned out that the, the, the gentleman concerned was a lecturer in media studies. So my first reaction was, this guy is conducting some kind of research of his own and planting a monster story and seeing how the media take it up. So that, that was the first time I heard these, these ideas. The next thing that happened was um, some photographs were taken of the monster by a professional photographer and I was shown those before it became public. And my first reaction to seeing the photographs was that they were indeed of something biological out in the middle of the lake, something moving around, some, something real, not, not an artifact. Um, but from my perspective, what I couldn't judge was the, the size of this thing. So it, it looked to me like it could just be a, a cormorant or a goosander or an otter, even a deer swimming in the lake. Sometimes we get deer swimming to the, into the lake. The sightings have all been tourists um, who are perhaps not used to being in the area, seeing the lake, seeing the various moods of the lake, because the mood of the lake can change very quickly. Um, there's lots of uh, different things that can happen. The light can change, um, swells can get up, the wind moves in different places at different times. It can be calm one minute and get up quite uh, blustery the next. Mountains as well do cast quite good shadows over the lake. Also, there's lots of woodland around the lake, um, which means it's very difficult to actually get to the edge of the lake to really look at it. And I think probably two thirds of the lake is private, and um, private woodland and private land around it. So most people are going to see Bonessi if they see it from quite a distance and I think you'll find that apart from some canoeists that thought they'd um, seen it while they were on the lake, um, most of the sightings have been from the hills or from a fair distance away. As, as a scientist, when we see hair of most sightings, what we, we desperately want is, is objective evidence for it and good photographs and there really haven't been good photographs. So it's the same as a, as a Loch Ness story. It just doesn't, doesn't produce decent photographs. If we grant, for the sake of argument, that an animal of this size cannot exist in Lake Windermere, the question remains, what did all these presumably honest people, swearing by their testimonies, really see? One of the ways in which we study the fish of the lake is using echo sounding, in which we go out in the lake in our research vessel and transmit pulses of sound five times every second down into the water. We drive around the, the lake on a, on a set, um, set of transects and we record things in the water column. So that lets us count the fish and it lets us assess the size of those fish as well. And we do that once a month, um, daytime and nighttime since 1990. And so we have good ideas of the changes in the numbers of fish and the changes in the, in the sizes. And we've never seen anything larger than a metre or so, which is the, the maximum size of a, a salmon or a pike that we would see. 
Some other people have suggested that the thing that's being seen really is an otter or even a, a family of otters at certain times of year because the otters are quite common around the Lake District now, much more abundant than they were just a few years ago and certainly do exist on Windermere and around Windermere. And if you saw something in the water and you misjudged the size of that object, then an otter would fill a lot, fit a lot of the descriptions that have been given. At, at certain times of the, of the year, the, the female otter will be with her cubs. So they will be in a, in a family group, as it were. So you can, if you're very lucky, you can see a group of otters moving together on the lake or around the edges of the lake. If the otters are, are close together, you could get the impression that you're looking at one big thing rather than a number of, of small things which are, are nearby. From a, a scientific point of view, I think we can speak with some authority for Windermere because it's the, the lake which has had by far the most scientific study in the whole of the United Kingdom. There have been scientists based at Windermere since the 1930s looking at all aspects of the lake. So it's really remarkable if, if something has existed and has not been detected by all of their sampling over all of those decades. The skeptics say that it's unlikely, but nobody has proved beyond reasonable doubt that there's nothing there. They can't do that. The lake's far too big for them to do that. This is a very old lake. It's an ancient piece of water. It was formed 13,000 years ago. Um, it's very deep. In places, it's more than 200 feet deep. So there may well be things down at the bottom of the water that are not yet to be explained. Another mystery likely to remain unsolved. But no matter what we think, so long as irrefutable proof of the monster's existence has not been presented, there will always be room for doubt. Some will consider this doubt justified and others will think it absurd, but this is the inevitable result of science that at least for now doesn't have all the answers. Bonacy is ultimately not very visible on the lake, but its presence is evident everywhere on the streets of Bonus on Windermere, where the residents have increasingly embraced it. It's now time to pass the monster from science to folklore. I believe there may well be some strange creature in the lake. I'd, I'd see no harm in believing in folklore and legend. I think folklore is very important to an area. Before 2006, Bowness wasn't part of our lives. And then there were the first sightings, and of course, with the first sighting, you were very skeptical. Then there's another. I think so far there have been eight sightings of Bonessi. Tourists can come from far and wide to do their own little investigation into Bonessi's existence. Outside of any chance monster encounters, they will discover a charming region filled with natural beauty. It's mainly British visitors, people from the Far East, and in a smaller proportion, people from North America, United States and Canada, and also people from France and Belgium and Holland and Scandinavia. Tourism is incredibly important to the Lake District National Park. Every year, about 15 million visitors come to the National Park. It sustains employment, about 15,000 full-time equivalent jobs in tourism, and the value of tourism to the Lake District National Park, somewhere in the region of a billion pounds. So it's incredibly important. I can't really tell how many of those visitors come to the area looking for Bonessi. Sure, some of them do, but I think probably the vast majority come for the spectacular landscape and the genuinely world-class visitor experiences. One thing that the Lake District is not is Disney World. You know, people come here for the scenery, for the mountains and for the lakes, but they also come to see Bonessi. You know, I have four hotels with 150 bedrooms of my own, 
and we ask our guests why they're coming here. And more and more of them are saying, we're coming here for Bernessi. As a coincidence today, it's the first time I've ever been asked this. This was a Chinese family, and they showed they had a Chinese uh, tourist book in Chinese with a picture of what they call, what it's supposed to be the Nessie. And he asked me, did I know anything about it? So, but that's the first time I've ever been asked. Bonessi isn't a tourist attraction in the sense that you know people come to ride on Bonessi um, or people come to see Bonessi toys. They come to see Bonessi on the lake. Of course, they can buy a Bonessi toy as well as a souvenir. But the real attraction of Bonessi is the chance of seeing Bonessi emerge from the depths of the water. You've got to keep your eyes peeled, don't you let your kids put your feet in the water. They uh, never know about Bonessi may, may be nibbling their tootsies and that sort of thing. So it, we sort of gee it up a little bit uh, to try and get them interested. And they do join in with the fun. And I think it just adds a little bit of fun to their uh, trip. Maybe they'll tell their friends, maybe it'll become a bit of a, a myth and a legend and uh, maybe it'll spread the word that way. Visitors from abroad particularly are very, very interested. The Lake District attracts a great many visitors from China and Japan. Um, and they like any kind of folklore stories. They love those kind of tales. And they appear to have really fallen for the stories about Bonessi as well. There's now um, a, a storybook for children about Bonessi, and that's very popular. And during the summer, I understand that quite a lot of Japanese and Chinese visitors went on a, a trail that's been set up by, mostly set up for children, actually, but um, grown-up Japanese and Chinese visitors went on the Bonessi Trail. So I think they, they are curious. China and we come here to study in Lancaster so we travel here to uh, spend some uh, holiday, yeah, holiday we can. Yeah. We are trying to buy the tickets there so we can listen to the uh, mysterious stories here so it will be sounds very interesting I think. During the Middle Ages dragons held an important place in English mythology. Some of the legends of King Arthur say that, pursued by the Knights of the Round Table, the dragons found refuge in the depths of Lake Windermere for thousands of years. Asian legends and the collective imagination of some areas alongside the Asian seas are also full of dragons and other sea creatures, which may explain why so many of the region's tourists hail from the Far East. Most of the Japanese come because of Beatrix Potter and Peter Rabbit, but the Chinese are coming because of Bonessi. They want to see the British dragon. I think it's very interesting that um, in the ancient history of the Chinese and the ancient history of England, there is a common link. Dragons are part of our national culture and they're part of the Chinese national culture. They're celebrated every new year. And in a sense, the British had begun to forget about dragons. Now Bonessi is back. Bonessi is reminding us that dragons are part of our culture. Legend or not, Bonessi certainly adds a unique flavor to the Lake District. But the tourists, who have been visiting since the arrival of the railroads during the Victorian era, 
Come visit first and foremost for its scenery, reputed to be the most beautiful in all of England. Oh, we love the Lake District. We come here um, probably a couple of times a year, maybe three times a year if we can. Um, we just think it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful and the kids love it and it's the fresh air and, and you know, the beautiful scenery. We don't really know about any monster here. We've never seen one anyway, but we always have a look, look when we're on the boats, but we haven't done yet. It's just a bit, bit of fun, isn't it? We have a little Bonesi display up on the wall, and we have some little stuffed Bonesi toys, some colouring books, some bits and pieces that uh, do spark interest in tourists. They perhaps have never heard of Bonesi until they walk in the shop, and then they see uh, the newspaper cluttings we have up on the wall, and they, uh, they will ask us, what's all this Bonesi thing? And we, we talk to them about it. We have a bit of a joke and say, well, if you have to be careful when you're on Lake Windermere, you never know. To those who argue that the story of a lake monster was invented to attract tourists, the residents of the Lake District have a simple and undeniably true answer. They have never needed a story to attract visitors to the lake's pristine waters and breathtaking scenery. It enables one to experience adventure on a fairly small scale that people who might dream of the Alps and the Himalayas but know they'll never get to the top of a mountain there. They can achieve something here with a relatively modest effort. They can get to the top of quite a difficult climb in a couple of hours and see the most spectacular views. And it's within everyone's grasp. It's all about achieving and realizing dreams. I would like to think that Bonesi does bring tourists to Windermere and the National Park as a whole. I think in years to come, Bonesi could become as big as Nessie up in Scotland. Why not? He's got to have a family member somewhere in the UK, so why not in Windermere? I don't think you would be fully human if you didn't find yourself here and find yourself standing on the edge of the lake and looking out and thinking, you know, is there really something in there? Anything that people can't fathom at, anything that people fear, any mystique, any mention of monsters always attracts the public. Now, here in the Lake District, we're already an established tourism base. It's one of the most beautiful areas in the UK, if not in Europe, and certainly if not in the world. It is a mini Switzerland, it's uh, a mini Rockies, it's a mini Alps, it has everything there. It has the four seasons, you have your spring, you have your summer, you have your autumn, you have your winter, which brings the snows. Each season is a different land when you look across the lake. And no two days when I walk down here, or I'm swimming here, no two days are the same. And the beauty of the Lake District is it's changing scenery, it's changing the atmosphere, and it's just beautiful. Now, Bonessi that comes in, that would attract other people for their own benefits to see what's out there. It can be no harm, and what it does, it attracts people into this beautiful area. I believe there's a monster out there, many don't and it probably would quell the, mis the mystery of Bonessi. But I'm a believer that Bonessi's out there and he's there enjoying the beautiful Lake District like we all do.